Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So NVIDIA have released a new app called the NVIDIA app. Um, and what it does is replaces the NVIDIA control panel that we've uh, all come to tolerate, I guess, over the years. I mean, that app really is getting long in the tooth. It's looked basically the same ever since like the Windows XP days. So we've got a nice new shiny app, all new redesign, lots of new features, but I'm not gonna go into too many of them in this video. I'm gonna do a deeper dive over on my other tech channel. If you're not subscribed, do get yourself over there and hit subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subs, um, then we can be monetized and we're gonna have two channels working for us, which would be awesome. We're at about 800 now, so um, anything you can do to get us closer to a thousand would be very much appreciated. So I was scrolling through the uh, the features on the website and it's all yeah, the standard kind of stuff you'd expect, but really caught my eye was this, the AI enhanced game visuals. You can see they've got some little demos here on the website, you look slider bars and things. And it got me thinking, could that improve things for us in the sim? Now, I know we've done a video a little while ago um, about the Nvidia filters and what a difference they can make. And that is basically what this is. It's a filter that you can add alongside all your other filters. So we're gonna go and take a look, see what difference it makes, see whether it's worth it, see if there are any drawbacks and uh, see if we can make our minds up on this one. Okay, so here we are at Gatwick. This is the flightsim.to version of Gatwick. So the free version um, that massively improves on the default one that comes with the sim. And I figure this would be a, a pretty good playground for us to have a little look around, run some tests and see what's what. So first things first, once you've got the NVIDIA app installed, and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description, it, it's in beta, so it's not official yet, but you can install it and have a play. What you need to do is press Alt and Z, and you get your uh, NVIDIA overlay. You see it looks a little bit different to what we've been used to. And in here, the game filters is what we want. So at the moment, you can see we're running no filters at all. And over here in profile one, I've got the RTX Dynamic Vibrance filter enabled. And you can see it here. It's one of the uh, many, many filters that we can choose from. You can see like all the other ones. You know, we've been seeing these sort of things for years now in the NVIDIA overlay filters. But this new one here, Dynamic Vibrance, is the one we're interested in. So let's turn it on and see if it makes a difference. So we're in off at the moment. And now we turn it on. You can see everything's just got a little bit more of a pop to it. And once you open it up, you can see we've got some slider bars here that weirdly, they're grayed out. Um, but what I've done is I've done a bit of playing before this video, and these are kind of the values that I've settled on. 25 for the intensity and the saturation boost of five. Much more than 25. And things just start to look a little bit weird, a little bit kind of washed out, a bit too oversaturated. It's one of those things where you can kind of end up in the uncanny valley quite quickly. So the other thing to think about, though, is what looks good for me on my monitor might not look good for you on your monitor, because obviously I'm looking at this with my own eyes. And obviously what you see is going to be the video that I record today that is going to be uploaded to YouTube that you're going to then view on your display, which could be calibrated completely differently from mine. So there are going to be some differences. And a lot of the feedback I had last year when we did the uh, NVIDIA filters video was your filters look rubbish on my monitor. It's like, well, yeah, I did kind of say that because that's kind of the point. Really, the, um, the point of today's video is to show you what's possible and maybe give you a bit of a baseline to start from. And then you can kind of go on from there and fine tune it for your displays. So, And again, as we sort of look out the window towards the terminal buildings, here we have the settings on and then off. On and then off and it does just give that little bit more vibrancy to the image again 25 on the intensity 5 on the saturation boost weirdly it's grayed out if what's weird if I close this go into the press escape to load up the menu then press alt and Z to go back into here expand it and now I can play with the sliders again it's really weird they seem to gray out and then ungray out um, depending on what you do with um, going into menus and things I think it's probably because the Nvidia app is still in beta so just kind of keep that in mind but now we're back into the game if we go back in now I've gone into the menu weirdly I can now mess with the the sliders and I can kind of show you the the difference that they can make so if we turn intensity all the way down to zero you can see we're basically back where we started all the way up to 100 and yeah I mean there's like no way there's just no way that we're going to use that I do think for my monitor at least 
sat here now looking at it with my eyes sort of between 20 and 25 is probably the sweet spot i'm going to go with 25 the saturation boost if you crank it up i don't know that just doesn't look natural especially looking at the grass and those kind of colors it just doesn't doesn't look right at all so i'm i may even just crank that off to zero so leaving the intensity at 25 saturation at zero let's go from there so again we'll do a quick comparison again so this is on i'm about to off on and off keep in mind you can also layer up these effects so we've got the rtx vibrancy on at the moment and that's all we're running you can see here active filters all we've got is rtx dynamic vibrance but we could add in a contrast filter and this is where you can start to layer those things up and get some really cool effects i do quite like a contrasty image i am a bit of a sucker for it so let's just crank it up to say 55 and again off on it is undeniably a big difference the question is do you like it because again this is all subjective all subjective keep in mind the other thing that's gonna affect things is the time of day so at the moment now we are what are we at 20 to 4 with live weather on at Gatwick let's turn live weather off And we'll show you what it looks like on a sunny day. So this is with it on. That's with it off. And again, you can sort of fiddle with things. Try different times a day. Get it just the way you like it. Maybe bring that intensity down just a touch. To 20. And again, just keep trying. Go through the time of day. Let's go to a sunset. back into the menu so this is with it on that's with it off on and off now disadvantages because we've got to talk about the disadvantages for me personally i think the disadvantages once you get to night time look at that that looks pretty cool doesn't it in fact let's do a quick on and off with that so this is with it off that's with it on on, oh sorry, off, and then on. Again, it's important that you go through all the different times of day because what looks great in the morning might look terrible in like midday sunlight. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to get to if I can uh, <laughs> move this along. If we go to nighttime, one of the disadvantages here is that I think the vibrancy is far too much. You can see here, look at all this kind of haloing around the lights on the runway look at the screens they almost look like those kind of cheap and nasty lcd tvs you can buy where they just cannot for the life of them reproduce a decent black level so again this is with it on if we turn it off to me that looks way better that's on that's off and one of the disadvantages is that with the RTX Dynamic Vibrance is that it says here, this filter will be applied across all profiles. So it's not like you can have a nighttime one and a daytime one because whatever you set here goes across all the profiles that you enable it on. All you can really do is just turn it off completely. So if I were doing night ops, I would probably elect to turn it off. But if I were doing daytime, so again, this is with it off, and at night time I think that looks fantastic. It really does look like night time, whereas otherwise it does look a little bit washed out if you put it on. But if we roll it back to say kind of sunset time, so this is with it off. Let's go back in and turn it on. That's off and on. And you can see that the bars have gone grey again. It's weird, like you, they seem to grey out and ungrey out at various times. I guess that's probably just due to the fact this is early days for the software. So, you know, things will things will change. But you can see, look at the screens now. Now we're in daylight. Well, I say day, barely daylight, but even so, the screens look absolutely fine. It's not like it was at night time where they're sort of glowing right at you in your face. And I know you can turn the brightness down. And even if we do that at night time, they still aren't great. I'll just quickly show you just for the sake of completeness. 
So there we go. Uh, we got profile one enabled, so it is on at the moment. So if we were to turn the brightness down of our PFD, you see it's still, oops, <laughs> switched them around. So in order to get the screen to a point where we can view it, I'd say that's probably about right, maybe one click higher. You can see the screen, like the the black areas of the screen, they do look very, very washed out. Whereas if we now turn the filters off, that looks much more like it. So nighttime, I'm not a big fan, but daytime, I think you can get some really cool effects. So just play with it, have fun. Um, what I'm gonna do is quickly just go to that sunset again. And if we remove that contrast, you kind of get a sense of how much that was adding to it all. Ah, now we can change the uh, the sliders again. So it's weird how they're graying out and not being grayed out. Just early days of the software. And you can just play with the sliders. That to me looks dreadful. But bring it back down to about low to mid 20s. Saturation, I'm not convinced it does a huge amount. Um, unless you crank it and then it doesn't look good at all. But this is really cool from NVIDIA. I mean, this is one of those things NVIDIA gets, uh, I think they get a hard time in general, especially at the moment because of their like, you know, relentless pursuit of AI. A lot of people think, well, you're, you're forgetting gamers. You're just interested in AI now. They're not a gaming company anymore. It's like, well, actually, if you think about all their advancements in AI, that is trickling down to us gamers because we wouldn't have DLSS upscaling without AI, we wouldn't have frame generation without AI, we wouldn't have NVIDIA broadcast noise removal on microphones to clean up our mic feeds without AI, and now we wouldn't have this without AI, so very, very cool stuff. It's nice that all of their kind of, uh, you know, big time endeavours with AI is kind of filtering down. But let me know what you think. I'd love to um, get some feedback from you all. Um, I think on my monitor here, with my eyes, it looks good. But at the end of the day, I am a content creator and it's you that's going to kind of watch the content that I make. So if you don't like how it looks, I think it would know, be handy to hear from you um, to see how it all looks on your devices. And because every screen is calibrated differently, it's going to look different depending on what screen you view it on. So the screen I'm looking at it on, from the point of view as me flying the sim, I'm like, yeah, it looks great. But if it looks bad for you, it's kind of handy for me to know that. Or if it looks good for you, let me know too. Um, not entirely settled on these values. I kind of think mid to low 20s on the intensity is where I'm going to land. Um, but it's going to be one of those things that over time you're just going to have to play with and experiment with. So let me know. I'd be really keen to hear from you. I do think it's a really uh, interesting piece of technology though for sure. And uh, could be really cool for The Sim and other games too. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, take the very best care of yourselves. And as always, happy flying.